Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Single Malt Review. This time we're going outside of Scotland. Dave's got this last centimetre or so of some nice Japanese whiskey for us today. What have we got there? Well, we have the Yoichi 10-year-old single malt. This is produced by the Nikka Whisky, Com Whisky Company. They are one of Japan's older modern distilleries, being established in 1934. Japan has a strong whisky tradition. It's a young tradition, but it's come along in leaps and bounds over the last few decades. They're now considered a major player on the high-end whisky scene worldwide, and producing an exceptional product. This one among them. Mm, no, very highly regarded mm. Japanese whisky. This particular distillery is based on Hokkaido, Japan's second largest island off to the north of the country. Bottled at 45% alcohol by volume, yeah, I'm definitely getting down. In mm, that's just about the last of that one. Yes. I got to it just in time. Uh, yes, now Japanese, Japanese whiskey, the, uh, as they say, the closest you can get, uh, that's the end of that one, the closest you can get to Scotch whiskey is Japanese whiskey. And um, a few other people would say that it's got more to do with Scotch whiskey than Scotch whiskey nowadays, because whereas a lot of Scotch has tended to modernise and experiment. The Japanese whisky makers are very, very traditional uh, in their practices. They use a lot of very old malting and firing and distilling practices that Scotland no longer uses because they're outmoded and they have moved on over there. So it's a very, in most cases, traditionally made whisky and can be quite interesting because of it. So, yeah, so it be interesting crossovers between the producers of whiskey in Japan and Scotland over the decades. We may go into more detail on this in the future, but there have been Japanese distillers trained in traditional Scottish methods at Scotch whisky distilleries. Mm, no, they've, they've um, started to finally import them back the other way from all those years ago when a uh, Scotsman um, taught the first Japanese distiller. Mmm, right, well that smells pretty promising. Only 10 years old, but old Japanese whiskey is very hard to find, you know, once you're up to 20 years old and older, then it becomes wildly exclusive and very, very difficult to buy. So, um, 10 year olds are probably the more attainable ones, and um, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, not a hugely dissimilar climate to Scotland, it can be very cold, especially up in the north of Japan, so similar maturation conditions. So let's see what we've got. The smell is lightly sweet, with a very light, salty savouriness too. Mm. No, I get the salty savoury. It is it's quite a sweet nose. It's just just a little bit hot. Hasn't lost anything from being just that last bit. There's still plenty of kick in there and it is clean to the glass quite firmly. There's mm. a lot of oil in there. Just a few maybe a bit of toasted nuts. Not, not a great bit. There's actually a tiny bit of peat some in here. Some sesame seeds, some grasses, and yes, a whiff of peat. Mm, nice and savoury. And peat's quite an uncommon thing in Japanese whiskey. It has not been done historically to any great effect, so it's either a new development or this was some sort of experimental one that they did. But given that it's the straight Yuichi 10, I don't think it is experimental. I think they just decided to do a little bit in this one. I think it's probably better for it, because of that dimension. Anyway, let's see what's inside. The taste is very much like the smell. There's a little bit of peat there. There are some big sweet flavours, but also strong nuts and seeds, grasses and grains. Mmm, no, lovely, lovely honey nuts. Um, the maltiness is quite dry, quite savoury. And that peat is still really quite evident, and so is the strength. It's a very robust whiskey at that strength. I'll bring it down a wee bit closer to 40, and it might give a bit more away. Though, thus far, I think it's very good. For a 10-year-old, it is perfectly mature. <sighs> That's got a more syrupy caramel character to it now. I'm tasting more of the honey and the sweet and nice you were describing. 
Mm, they're definitely livened it up. It's got a little bit of fruit now, but not a great deal. I've always found in the few Japanese whiskies I've tasted, which is not a great many, that if there's one way in which they differ from scotch, because they don't differ greatly, they really are the closest thing to scotch whisky, um, is that they're prone to being slightly drier, slightly more, not even necessarily more savoury, but less of the sweet upfront characteristics in the Japanese stuff. In some cases, if you end up with a sherry Japanese whiskey, which is astonishingly uncommon, but um, those ones are perfectly sweet. I think there's a little bit of sherry in here, in the, in the blend that makes this up. I also think there's probably quite a lot of whiskey that is much older than 10 years old. I think this has been quite generously top dressed because it's tasting really, really very mature, such that I wouldn't expect out of a 10 year old whiskey. So that's, that's pleasing to see. Mm. We don't have a vast amount of information to go on for our tasting notes since the label itself is predominantly in Japanese mm. and also even on the internet the detail, in-depth detail is yes. reasonably and sparse. Our grasp of kanji is not strong so we will just have to uh, leave that to someone who knows and um, give you just what we're getting but I think if you're looking for a reasonably balanced reasonably simple but not overly simple whiskey uh, for most occasions I would certainly give this one a look it's extremely pleasant and it's probably pretty reasonable I think the the ten-year-olds from Yurichi, um the other brands that Nico has and um, maybe not so much some of the more exclusive um, Japanese whiskey brands out there, but I'm pretty sure Nika's 10 year olds are pretty good and the blends they do Which I think in most Western markets are blended malts rather than truly blended whiskies um, They're not bad either, but they're not quite as reliable as the singles with a year statement on them Hmm For the every, everyday consumer one set back to Japanese whiskey can be the price. You will not find a cheap Japanese whiskey. You, they do cost a premium, for a pound for pound, in mm. comparison to a Scotch whiskey. Oh, they, they, they are in, in every way more expensive. Yeah. But offset to that, you will be very unlikely to ever find a bad Japanese yes. whiskey. The range is much narrower, but the quality is outstanding throughout. Mm. They know how to price it, but they know how to make it as well. So I suppose... Um, can't really complain about that, and I can't complain about this. Um, for my score, I think I'd probably be giving it one of those 7.5s again. I think it's really very good, but it's still just a 10 year old, so it's not going to be explosively astounding, but I think it's well made. Um, good whiskey. 7.5 for me. And a solid 7 from me, it is a tasty and fulfilling drop. Very pleasant, very easy on the tongue. Yes, definitely worth a try, especially if you're looking at something a little bit different. There is a unique character to Japanese whiskey that sets it slightly apart from scotch. It's difficult to pin down precisely. There's something in the flavour, something in the mouthfeel. It's a slightly unique characteristic you will not find. Mm. Taste a bit of it and you will start to tell the difference. For me, it's that dryness. Um, that slightly more tannic quality to the wood that comes through um, but you'll just have to see for yourself. Either way, I hope this has been informative. If there is a whiskey you would like us to take a particular look at then don't hesitate to leave a comment and we will have a look and see if we can find that one for you. We're always on the lookout for something new and interesting but as far as this one goes I think that's just about it covered. So, thank you for watching. This has been the Single Malt Review and we will see you very shortly with another interesting whiskey. Slide it.